Hi everyone, welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to my, what I'm liking to call like mid-Victober check-in. Um, I just wanted to check in with the books that I have read and what I will be starting just to keep the momentum up and just to keep my love of Victober just like shining through because I'm just having so much fun. You know when you just, I feel like this is a month where I just stop reading every other book that I have, you know, got on my list and TBR and all these new non-fictions that are coming out and all these new fiction and fantasy and sci-fi books. This is a month where I get to take a breather and get to enjoy some beautiful Victorian classics. So let's go through what I have read so far. The first book I managed to tick straight off my list was Far From the Maddening Crowd by Thomas Hardy. This was absolutely divine. It's a very hopeful hardy because I have read Tessa D'Urbervilles and I have read Jude the Obscure, which are not hopeful hardies. Um, they're beautifully written, but they're not of the hopeful variety, let's just say that. But this is an absolutely stunning novel that follows mainly two people in being Bathsheba Everdeen and also Gabriel Oak. Mainly Gabriel you begin with and he's a young farmer who's starting out in life. He's uh, managed to work his way up to owning his own farm and he thought he had you know prospects and he was going somewhere. He meets Bathsheba who at the time is just like his neighbor's uh, granddaughter and it's it's just really beautiful how this story weaves in and he falls in love with her in at a very early stage in the book but he his loss of fortune her moving on and moving into fortune as well really cements this divide between them and even though she didn't want to get married when she was younger she eventually realizes that she does fall in love and that's what she was always waiting for to fall in love and unfortunately she falls in love with someone who really just saw her as a conquest as such. And it's very interesting, the relationships that are developed between Bathsheba and three men in this novel, but it is absolutely stunning. The writing is beautiful. You kind of see that a uh, rural cast or, or the chorus that you usually have in a Hardy novel where they have these um, rural like figures such as different farmhands and villages and everyone in the area. But you have like a little, view in and they are discussing something that's just happening in the local area at the time and you get so much more opinion and backstory in those moments than just in following the main characters in what they're doing. So it is beautifully written. You can see it's very much starting his Wessex cast and also his Wessex places and like that kind of deep ingrained Wessex country that he has in a majority of his uh, works which are called the Wessex novels. So this one is beautiful. I think it's a great starting point for Hardy as well. Probably this one and also the Mayor of Casterbridge. Mayor of Casterbridge, I feel, is a very big Greek tragedy play. It's a very big, bold and um, big themes in that one. And it's very easy to pick apart where this one is more romantic. So if you favour more on the romantic side of a story, definitely start with this one in the Hardys if you do want to get into them but it was beautiful and I, and I thoroughly enjoyed starting Victober with Thomas Hardy. The next one I took a bit longer than I expected to get through, mainly because I was expecting to whiz through it. And then of course, halfway through, I had to do a rewatch of the BBC mini series, and that is North and South. I made the startling realization in my announcement TBR video that um, I haven't read this for close to 15 years. And that was shocking. <laughs> mainly because it feels like so close and I know the BBC drama so well. It's one of my absolute favourites. So it was quite shocking that I had read this basically as soon as I saw the miniseries. I picked this up and I didn't really uh, realise how long ago that was. But it is an absolutely beautiful read. Um, it's very romantic. So if you do enjoy a good romance, I highly recommend this one. But another thing that makes it a wonderful read is the fact that the main character, Margaret Hale, who you follow throughout the book, she is very much a woman onto herself. Very much like Beth Bathsheba, who's a woman making her own way in the world. Like Margaret does live within the constraints of women at the time, I'm not saying she's this big modern figure, but she's still someone who's been uniquely herself and she doesn't 
understand at times the constraints that women will feel under. She's not bound to society in that way. She very much does what she wants and her own thing. And I think this is a really fascinating trait because you supposedly had Margaret, who's this, um, you know, this southerner who doesn't really understand the ways of the North, when all the women up there who, you know, you think are so mercantile and independent, when Margaret in a way is more independent than they are, because they're bound to this idea of society and money, where she is not, she does not need to have that expectations. And she does not want to meet any of those expectations. But it is a beautiful read nonetheless. And it's just wonderful to see because I think I remember the BBC drama so well because I just watched it that many times. And it's really beautiful to see the slight differences in the story. I think that Mr Thornton in this, the love interest, he is so much more romantic in the book because you get a little bit of his internal monologue and it is beautiful. It is absolutely stunning. So I think he's a little bit more romantic in the book, um, but I do think the actor who played Thornton in the miniseries portrayed that very well with some very searching looks <laughs> and big doe eyes. So I thought it was beautiful. And if you loved the miniseries, I definitely recommend picking up the book. So the book I'm currently reading, I'm reading on ebook, and that is John Marchmont's Legacy by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. I'm reading that one with Kate Howe and loving it. I am just sinking into it. It's amazing how fast this book is going, actually. Um, and I always am surprised that, you know, you have all these beautiful books that get so popular and they were popular at the time. Mary Elizabeth Braddon was quite prolific and she wrote some really amazing books so I'm always surprised that her books aren't as readily available to find um, mainly because they're not being published as frequently which I think is a real shame like you always get Lady Audley's Secret and you get like I think the other one was The Doctor's Wife and things like that but I really think there should be someone out there who should be publishing all Mary Elizabeth Braddon's books because they are so wonderful and they're so different because it's almost as if she likes playing with different genres that are popular and she likes putting on different hats in different books so she likes to explore hmm let's go into like a mystery so that John Marchmont's legacy is really like turning into like a fun Wilkie Collins style mystery so I can just see her putting on a, like a Wilkie Collins hat and diving into it where the doctor's wife was kind of putting on a Bronte hat and diving into that it's just so much fun to read all of these books and I would highly recommend if you're wanting to read like a sensationalist novel just pick up a Mary Elizabeth Braddon probably Lady Audley's Secret because that is probably her most sensationalist novel but it is a very good one to start with for her. So they're the books I'm currently reading and have read for Victober um, and these are the ones I'm hoping to you know start next as we get into the more ghoulish kind of Halloweeny part of October and obviously I'm definitely going to be starting Dracula next. I feel like this one is going to demand at least a week of my reading time and so I've allocated a week for Dracula before I start Thomas Hardy's um, The Laodicean. The Laodicean, I think it's how it's pronounced. But yeah, so these two are my next absolute definitely on the list to read that I cannot wait to start. I am still contemplating if I should pick up this ginormous book, this Dickens, uh, Dombey and Son, just because I know it comes so highly recommended. And it's one that I've wanted to read for a very long time. And it's one that was a huge popular novel in the Victorian period. But it's just the pages, the pages are just putting me off. So I feel like perhaps if I start it, I could slowly get into it that way. But otherwise, I do potentially plan to pick up some Victorian poetry as well and see how I go with that. So, um, yes, I'm not sure. Definitely considering... I only have two weeks left, so I'm not sure if this is a two week. I did read Bleak House in two weeks, but Bleak House was not quite as big as this one. So this one might bleed over into November if I did start it now, or it could be a very good book to read throughout the year, perhaps. I'm not sure how much time I want to allot to this one, but it's definitely one that I do want to read. 
All right, so that is my current wrap up for Victober. Let me know how you're going and what books you're reading at the moment for Victober. And I can't wait to have my wrap up video and talk more about all these books with you at the end of the month. Okay, so have happy reading and all the best for Victober. I'll see you next time. Bye.